Hi everyone, welcome to our Schools Out for Summer Tasting. My name is Lauren, I will be your host for tonight. Um, I'm gonna go over a few ground rules and then I will go into the history of Ethel M and then introduce Tammy, Joe, your chocolatier for tonight. So first off, um, I hope everyone is enjoying their summer. If you graduated, congratulations. If you're still in school, I hope you get to start your summer soon. And thank you all for joining us tonight. So to start, we cannot hear or see any of you. So to interact, please go ahead and use that chat feature. Talk about what you're liking, what you're tasting, if you're agreeing with Tammy Joe's flavor notes, if you taste something different. This is really um, originally a pretty interactive experience. So that is a good way to interact with each other and with us to see how you're liking everything. And then if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A portion. I'll be monitoring that throughout the tasting and then we will save the rest of the questions for Tammy Jo at the very end because she is the true expert with this. Um, as I mentioned, we cannot hear or see you, but we would love to see how you have your tasting set up at home. So go ahead and take pictures, take videos, and tag Ethel M Chocolates or hashtag Ethel M Chocolates on Instagram or Facebook so we can see how you have your setup tonight. Um, the last thing I wanna mention is that we have another tasting coming up on July 23rd and that is our classic virtual tasting. So I will talk to you all about a discount code that we can offer at the very end of this tasting. So make sure to stay tuned for that. For our history of Ethel M, you will see in the top left photo is Forrest Mars. So he started the Mars M&M candy company with his father, Frank Mars, and they made M&Ms, Skittles, Twix, Snickers, all of those well-known brands all fall under Mars. He retired in 1981 and started Ethel M Chocolates, which is the gourmet line. So he started using recipes that him and his mother Ethel made in their kitchen all the way back in 1911 in Tacoma, Washington. And we still use some of those recipes today. You'll see in that top middle photo is a photo of our factory and we're located just about 10 minutes away from the strip in Las Vegas. You can see the strip in the very back of that photo. You'll see our factory and then our beautiful cactus garden right outside of it. That is over three acres and over 300 species of cactus right outside of our factory. You'll also see in the two photos on the right how beautiful it is. There's always something in bloom. So if you're ever in the area visiting Las Vegas, please come by and see us. It's especially beautiful during the holiday season. You'll see in that bottom photo some lights on our cactus garden. So we decorate the entire garden with over 1 million LED lights during the holiday season from November 5th to January 5th and we transform it into a big winter wonderland. It's really fun to see. We also serve our world famous hot chocolate. So it's fun to walk through the factory and then walk through the garden. The last thing I wanna mention about Ethel M is how sustainably focused we are as a company. And it's one of my favorite things. Just outside of our cactus garden, we have a 4.4 acre solar panel garden. So that generates enough energy to power our factory during its busiest times which is pretty crazy to think about. The busiest times of our day, our peak production hours are all powered by the sun and by solar power energy. So one of my favorite things about Ethel M. All right, I will introduce Tammy Jo so you don't have to wait much longer to try the chocolate. So Tammy Jo has been with our company for 20 years. So over half the time we've even been a company, Tammy Jo has been with us. She started learning all about the factory side and giving tours of the factory. So she knows all about the machines, how we make the pieces, all of that stuff. And then recently transitioned to the retail side where she trains associates. She hosts multiple tastings daily and continues her education of chocolate through Mars. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Tammy Jo. All right, while she gets everything together, make sure you have your chocolate in front of you. Make sure you have your tasting mat in front of you and a glass of water so you can cleanse your palate in between each piece. We won't make you wait too much longer for everything. <laughs> Perfect. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry about the technical difficulties. All right, hello, welcome. I am Tammy Joe. I am your host today. 
And I'm very excited to share these delicious chocolates with you. We've got a really good lineup for you guys. They're going to be delicious. Um, so we're going to learn a lot about chocolate today. There's a lot of fun facts, but we're not going to make you wait too long. We're going to go ahead and start with a piece first. Then we're going to learn some fun facts. We're going to have another piece. And so we're going to kind of do it that way. We're going to give you a little fun fact, eat some chocolate, fun fact, eat some chocolate. And so let's dive on into how to eat the chocolate properly. So first up are some rules, more like guidelines really. So these guidelines are really gonna help you um, get the most flavor out of all of your chocolates, okay? So of course, step number one is touch. You're gonna pick your chocolate up. You're gonna take a look at it. Try to think of like, how was this piece made? Is it gonna be a firm center? Is it gonna be a soft center? Is it gonna be runny? Like, what do you think about it? Then you're going to smell it. 80% of your taste comes from your smell. So by smelling your chocolate, you're bringing out all of those flavors and nuance. So then we're going to take a bite. Now on the first piece, we're gonna go ahead and just dive on in. But on our second piece, wait for the cue. I have a special little food trick I'm gonna share with you guys that's going to just like, it's really cool. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a bite of your chocolate when you're ready. And then you're gonna chew a couple times, push it up to the roof of your mouth and then let that chocolate melt slowly. We wanna to try to eat chocolate as slow as we possibly can. Usually we're in just such a hurry because it's so good, we just wanna eat a whole bunch right away. We wanna slow it down today and really kind of like think about the texture, think about the taste. And as you're enjoying your piece, I'm gonna to describe to you how that piece was made and all the details from the filling to the chocolate itself. All right, so let's get into our first piece of chocolate. We're gonna be trying our vanilla truffle, okay? So this is what it looks like. This one is really interestingly made. There's lots of different things that go into this piece, but before we get to that part, let's go ahead and try it. So we're gonna pick it up. We're gonna take a look at it. This one's kind of bumpy, right? It's not smooth. It's really bumpy. Um, and we're gonna talk about how it gets that texture. But first, let's go ahead and smell the piece and find out like, what do you smell? I smell cooked milk or like, like you're making hot chocolate and you're warming up the milk on the stove. That's kind of what it smells like to me. If you're having a hard time smelling it, you can kind of rub it with your thumb or like rub it with your finger and then this, it'll warm it up so you can smell it better. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and take a bite. Mmm. This one's so good. This one is a truffle. So with a truffle, it has ganache. And ganache is basically heavy whipping cream and chocolate. So it's very, very, very soft, very smooth. It's almost like silk. It just melts in your mouth. So delicious. And even though the flavor is kind of mild on this one because it is a white chocolate, it definitely goes into a lot of different categories on a, a flavor wheel. So this slide that we see here is going to be what you're going to be seeing for all the pieces. It's going to break it down. It's going to show you some fun pictures of the chocolate. Here we have a pod with the um, beans and they're still covered in the pulp. And we're going to talk about how white chocolate was made and all of that. So with this piece, it kind of goes into dairy. It goes into roasted a little bit, but mostly it goes into vanilla and uh, with that sweet aromatics, and it goes into dairy because of the milk chocolate. So fun fact, a lot of people don't think that white chocolate really is chocolate. It is chocolate. So what they do is when they break down the bean and they grind it up, they're going to separate the cocoa butter. Beans are 50%, and I have a bean right here to show you. This is what the bean looks like. Beans are 50% cocoa butter and 50% cocoa solids. So if they're making white chocolate, then they're going to use just the cocoa butter and they're gonna add cream, sugar, and vanilla to that to make the white chocolate. Let's go into some more materials that we're gonna to use to help enhance our experience. This is a placemat that you're gonna be using and it is going to help you like figure out what piece is your favorite because sometimes you try the next one and then, oh wait, this one's my favorite. 
And then you try the third one, you're like, oh my God, no, this one's my favorite because it's going to just keep getting better. So you really want to use your placemat to write down your thoughts and feelings about each piece. What did you taste when you first tasted it? What did you feel? Was it thick? Was it smooth? Was it like runny? So write all those thoughts down and definitely use the flavor wheel here because that's going to help guide you on what you're tasting because sometimes it's on the tip of your tongue because it, you're eating it. It's on the tip of your tongue. And so you can't quite pinpoint that word. But if you look at that flavor wheel you have on your placemat, it's really going to help you identify like what pieces go into what categories. And we're going to talk about that as we're eating. So without further ado, let's get into some fun facts. So cacao trees can only grow 20 degrees north and south of the equator because of the environment. And what's really cool about this environment is very, very tropical. There's lots of humidity. It gets about no higher than 80 degrees and there's no season. So it can, the trees can bloom year round, which is really cool. So no worries on there ever being a bad season. So it's going to bloom year round. Um, we usually get our beans from Indonesia, uh, Brazil and South America. So if you take a look at our next clip, it's going to show you what it looks like, what's growing on the tree. And this is really interesting. The flowers will bloom over the entire tree, not just on the branches. Most fruit trees, when you think about them, they grow on the branches. But this particular tree will bloom all over the entire tree, so it'll grow everywhere, even on the base of the trunk. And as you see in the photo there, they're quite big. I have one right here. It's been dehydrated, so it's a little bit smaller than it would be in real life. But you can kind of see, like, by the way, I'm holding it, like how big it would be. It's like a small, like a small football almost. It's a little bit more rounded. Like I said, this one's dehydrated. You can kind of hear the beans inside. Pretty cool. So roughly 45 to 60 beans will be in each pod and they have to use machete technology to cut it off the tree. And what I mean by that is that the stem is right here. It's very, very thick. So because the stem's so thick, you can't just grab it and twist it and pull it off. You have to use machete to cut through that stem to get it off the tree. They're going to crack it open, get the beans out inside. And when the beans first come out, they are really gooey and covered in a, in a, a pulp. And that pulp actually tastes really sweet. If you were to try it, uh, it tastes kind of like mango or like pineapple. And the bean inside kind of has the texture of a nut. It's very crunchy like a nut, but it's very, very bitter, very earthy. It's like eating a coffee bean. Uh, if you ever get the opportunity to try it, definitely try it. It looks, let's face it, if you look at the photo there, it doesn't look very appealing, but definitely try it. It is so worth it if you ever get the opportunity. Um, so what they do with they with the beans after they scoop them all out is they go through fermentation. And what that means is it's going to basically sit out in the sun in a box and it's going to ferment. It burns off the pulp. The sun burns off the pulp and changes the acidicness of the bean and prepares it for making chocolate. The stage after that is the sun drying table. So then they're going to put it in a thinner layer this time instead of piled up on itself. They're going to spread it out so it can really dry. And then the sun kind of like gives it a golden brown color. We're going to pause right there because I feel like you guys are ready for another piece of chocolate, okay? So let's dive on it. All right, this one is our creamy caramel. And as the photo and the name suggests, it is very creamy and very gooey. So this one's going to get a little messy. Hopefully I don't make a big mess because I'm usually a messy eater. Um, but go ahead and smell your chocolate. Now, right off the bat, you can kind of smell a difference. This one has a lot more roasted flavor to it compared to our vanilla truffle that we just tried. Our fun trick, hopefully haven't bitten to it yet. What we're gonna do is we're going to plug our noses. We're gonna take away one of our senses. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna smell your chocolate again, and then you're going to hold your nose shut and take your bite like this. and then release. Oh my gosh, that's so good. So when you released, what did you taste? Definitely use that chop box because it's really fun to interact with each other and figure out if everybody's tasting the same thing. Um, for instance, I tasted like butterscotch. 
even though this is a creamy caramel, it goes into that sweet aromatic category. So to me, it kind of tasted like butterscotch at first, but then now it's starting to taste like really rich caramel. It's very runny and gooey, very delicious. So that one is one of my, one of my many favorites that I have. Um, so let's talk about how this piece was made and how the vanilla truffle was made. So with both these pieces, they are molded. With the white chocolate piece, that is molded in two separate molds that connect together to make the perfect round circle. After they take it out of the mold, they actually hand roll it to give it that fancy texture. And then they hand sprinkle the cocoa powder on the outside, which is what was sprinkled on top of your vanilla truffle. With the milk chocolate caramel, this one is also a molded piece. It's gonna go into a mold and that's why it has that nice smooth kind of carved design into it. And it's really, really gooey runny caramel, which is why this piece has to be molded. The molding process basically has two tanks. One will have the filling and one will have the chocolate shell and they interact with nozzles. So there's an inside nozzle and then there's another like, like kind of like a straw. There's a straw with another straw wrapped around it. And each straw is connecting to one of the tanks. The filling goes into the inside and the chocolate shell goes on the outside. And it does a filling and shell all at the exact same time. It takes about one minute per mold, which is pretty cool. It's very, very quick. And then it goes into a cooling tunnel and gets chilled. So what did you guys think about this piece? Like what flavors did you get out of this one? I think it definitely goes into dairy. It has that milk chocolate, caramelized flavor, uh, lots of butter from the buttery caramel. Very, very delicious. Um, now you guys do have a bottle of water with you guys. So definitely rinse your palates with the water, okay? Before you get another piece. And here's a shout out for you guys in sweet moments. And your day already got sweeter, didn't it? <laughs> All righty. So if you've cleansed your palate already, we're going to dive on into that next piece. This one is a caramel again, but it's got a little bit of a twist. This one's a chewy texture. So this is actually enrobed, and we're going to talk about how that works. But if you look at it, it's got this delicious salt on it. Look at that, oh my goodness, so delicious. So there's two ways to eat a sea salt caramel. There's salt up, the way I'm holding it now with the salt on the top, and then there's salt down, okay? And that's a true test of good sea salt. There's nothing falling off of that, that's awesome. So I personally like salt down and I always eat my caramels, sea salts down now because it lands on your palate in a different pattern. So if you bite it salt up, you're gonna notice the chocolate, then you're gonna notice the caramel, and then you're gonna notice the salt towards the end of the piece. But if you were to flip it upside down, you're actually gonna notice it in a completely different pattern. It'll be salt and then chocolate and then caramel. So definitely take two bites with this piece and figure out which side do you like it, salt up or salt down. So let's go ahead and smell our chocolate. Mmm, smells good, right? Oh, so good. Okay, here we go. Take a bite. Mmm, so chewy. Mmm, let it melt. Mmm, I call that part respecting the chocolate. Let it melt, take your time, don't rush it. Think about the texture and the taste and your overall impression on it. It goes into dairy, it goes into roasted, it goes into sweet automatics, just like the creamy caramel did, but it has a little bit more butter flavor. It has a little bit different of a texture and that salt, oh, so good. Now try it, salt down. So flip it upside down, take another bite, salt down. Salt down for me. This is so good. You really get all that salty flavor. It complements the butter and the caramel, just brings it all out and just makes it burst. Oh, so delicious. Mm -hmm. This is definitely one of my favorite pieces. It's so good. With this piece, it's enrobed. So, like I was saying, it goes through a curtain of chocolate. It's like, it's a big tank. The tank pumps the chocolate into a trough. And we have a picture 
coming up so you can see the detail of that. The trough then flows the chocolate down and the pieces will get cut and then they will get um, cut into the perfect square shape and they'll go through that curtain of chocolate and get covered. And then after they get covered, a warm fan of air will blow onto it to give it that perfect finish. And then there's someone standing there watching every piece go by and they hand sprinkle the salt on every piece, which is pretty awesome. All right, let's get into some more fun facts. All right, so how do they get from South America, Brazil, Indonesia to here? We have to sort our beans first. So what they do is they sort through the entire batch of beans. They use this little board. They put the beans in, it cuts it in half, and we inspect all of the beans. The color we want on the inside of the bean is actually, um, if you think about kind of like meat when you're ordering a steak or something, you want it well done. Some people like it rare, but with beans, you always want it well done. We want it to be nice and brown on the inside. We don't want the pink ones. So if they were pink, we would reject those, and we only keep the ones that are dark brown on the inside. That's how we know it's completely fermented. This is what the beans look like, about the size of what it would look like. So after they sort the beans, they wash and inspect them, they sort through them, they're bagged and then taken to Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, where they are then roasted. So this is what they look like. I got a whole bunch. I like the sound that it makes. <laughs> All right, so once they break them up, they're gonna get roasted, they're gonna get ground into a chocolate liqueur. From that chocolate liqueur, like with the white chocolate, they separate the cocoa butter and the cocoa solids and they blend it back in depending on what they're making. So if they're making milk chocolate, they would do cocoa butter, cocoa solids, and they'd add some milk and sugar. If they're doing dark chocolate, they're gonna roast it a little bit differently. They're gonna add more cacao solids and uh, less milk and less sugar and that makes it a darker, richer flavor. Um, so that's how they make the dark milk and white chocolate. And then there's a little enrobed piece right there that you can see little pieces going through. Uh, the piece that you're seeing being robed in this photo is actually gonna be one of the pieces we're trying today. So try to look at that photo and see if you can kind of guess what flavor we might be trying at the very end. So we'll see if you guys are right. Uh, so this is the picture of the enrober I was telling you about. There's this big vat filled with this little uh, curtain of chocolate flowing. And if you look at the very bottom where the pieces are, you'll see a wire, like a wire conveyor belt. And that's so that the chocolate kind of falls through and goes back down into the tank so nothing's wasted. And then the pieces will go through and some of the pieces get a fancy drizzling design on it. And we also have to make sure that our chocolate is tempered perfectly, which gives it a very nice snap and that nice shiny coating that you guys are seeing. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's get into some more chocolate. We're gonna be trying our milk chocolate truffle now. So this one's automatically gonna have a little bit more roasted flavor. You're gonna notice more of that richer coffee espresso finish because of the fact that we're trying a milk chocolate. And you're gonna to remember to smell your chocolate this one has that bumpy texture again. So this is one of those pieces that had two molds together. They filled it with the one shot depositor and then afterwards they hand rolled the chocolate. Like that in the bowl, they can hand roll it or roll it in a bowl to give it that really cool bumpy texture. All right, let's go ahead and smell the piece. Mmm, delicious, I'm so excited. This is, I love truffles. Truffles are my weakness, I <laughs> love them. All right, let's go ahead and dive on in. If you want to do the nose trick again, this is how we're going to do it. You're going to smell it, plug your nose completely, and then take a bite and hold it for as long as you can, and then release. So plug your nose. It's going to make you talk a little funny. This one had a different effect when we did that one. I noticed more, almost like a mocha flavor, um, lots of roasted flavor from this one, but it's also very, very sweet. So it definitely goes into sweet aromatics as well with a little bit of hint of vanilla. It definitely gets that toasted flavor and lots of dairy because of the milk chocolate. 
And filling, a lot of people ask, uh, what is the filling in a truffle? It's ganache, and ganache is heavy whipping cream and chocolate, and that's what the texture is. That's why it's so silky and so smooth and so soft, which is why we have to mold it. Mm. Take that moment for yourself, let it melt. So delicious, so good. And remember, after you're done enjoying your piece, you wanna to try to rinse your palate with some water before you move on to a next piece. If you're not done yet, that's fine too. Take your time, enjoy the piece. Happy birthday. I hope you're having a sweet birthday. <laughs> All righty, make sure your palate's very cleansed. I'm gonna drink a little bit more water. And now we're gonna get into the next one. This one is a raspberry satin cream. So this one's also enrobed. It went through that curtain of chocolate. You can see the cool little designs on the top of it. And that is done by a machine called a Stribbon machine. So it's kind of like, um, I always describe it as like watching a car go through a car wash, okay? So imagine a car wash, except instead of water, it's chocolate. I know, I would wanna go through that too. Uh, so at the part where the little strips of material go back and forth to scrub your car, that's what it would look like with the chocolate, except for it's like chocolate stribbins falling down and then it shakes in different patterns and that is what causes the really cool design on your chocolate. And that design is gonna help you identify what the piece is. And so you'll know what you're gonna be getting in your box. So that's pretty cool. All right, go ahead and smell your chocolate. Mm. Now, sometimes you can smell past the chocolate and you actually can smell the filling, sometimes you can't. But with this one, I can actually smell what it is, even if I didn't know it was raspberry. I actually smell raspberry. Like I can smell kind of a perfumey, very sweet, fruity flavor coming from this piece. So, and again, if you wanna do the nose trick, you're gonna plug your nose, then take your bite. If you don't want to, that's okay too, but go ahead and take a bite. Mmm. This one's very fudge-like. So this one's very, very thick, but very, very soft at the same time. Lots of butter flavor. It has like that sweet fruity flavor. It's tangy as well, kind of like, like tart. That's a better word, tart. Um, this one's really, really cool to watch being made in the factory. You can see how it has that like really thick kind of fudgy texture. It's very, very soft. What happens in the factory when they make this piece is um, they start off with butter and caramelized sugar. That's the base of a buttercream. So when you first see it, actually looks like similar to a creamy caramel. But then when they add it into the um, round mixer that you see in the, in the slide here, they add the fruit puree and they slowly mix it and it kind of folds in on itself and cools at the same time. So as it's mixing and cooling, it starts getting thicker and thicker and fudgier. And as that happens, it goes from like caramel to a dark purple color and then it turns into this rosy pink color that we see now. And so it's really cool because it goes to this completely liquid, runny, gooey mess. And then all of a sudden it gets like thick and fudgy like dough and you can just like pick it up and put it into the extruder to shape the pieces. It's really cool to watch. Um, this is one of our signature pieces, one of her original recipes and it's definitely a fan, fan favorite for sure. All right, if you guys are done with this piece, remember to cleanse your palate with some water. And then we have some more sweet moments to share with you guys. Another happy birthday, happy birthday, Glenn. All right, our finale. 
we're going to go into some dark chocolate. So when you smell this one, you should notice right away that the smell is more intense. It's a little bit more roasted. It's going to be a lot stronger. So let's go ahead and pick up the piece. So what do you guys think? Is it molded or enrobed? It is enrobed. Yes. So go ahead and smell your chocolate. Mm, you can smell that it's a lot richer, a lot darker, it has more roasted flavor to this piece compared to the milk chocolate raspberry that we just tried. So go ahead and take a bite. Mm. So good. Again, it has that really thick, but very soft, fudgy texture. This is our vanilla buttercream. So it has that warm, delicious kind of soothing vanilla flavor, but it also has that rich cocoa kind of coffee flavor as well. Perfect combination. This is just one of those traditional pieces that you kind of have to have in your box. It is definitely one of my favorite pieces for sure. So good. <laughs> so this one had that strip and design as well. So it would have gone through the enrober, it would have gone through that little strip and machine. And then that has that rich, warm kind of vanilla um, flavor to it. Super, super delicious. Lots of butter flavor too. I definitely am getting like a lot of butter flavor. I know notice with our buttercreams, it's not grainy. It's just very, very thick, very fudgy, very smooth. And that's because of how slowly we cool down those buttercreams as it's mixing in the cream beater. It slowly mixes it. So it's that really thick, fudgy texture but it's not like grainy. So really delicious. Definitely goes into the roasted categories. Oh, so good. So we'd like to know what your favorite piece is. You guys should let us know. Um, so I'll hand it over to Miss Lauren. That was the last piece. And uh, definitely let us know what piece you liked and share your photos, especially I'd like to see um, if, if you guys colored your photo, I kind of started coloring mine. If you guys started coloring your photos, definitely share those moments with us. We'd really love to see them. Yes, yeah, so if anyone has any questions, please go ahead and type them into the Q&A box. Tammy Jo is going to hang out for a little and answer any questions if you have any. Um, I mentioned before that we do have another tasting coming up on July 23rd. That is our classic tasting. So you'll get two five piece classic samplers and we'll go through each piece just like we did tonight. If you would like to do that, we do have a code for you for 15% off. Here's the code virtual and it's valid through this weekend. So if you purchase it through this weekend or any of your other favorite pieces that you tried tonight, I know my favorite is a vanilla truffle. I love white chocolate. I'm such a sucker for white chocolate. So um, use that code virtual and you'll get 15% off anything that you purchase on FLM.com, including the tasting on July 23rd. And it looks like we don't have any questions just yet. Let's see, yep, the raspberry satin cream and vanilla satin cream were some of our most popular. Yes. Raspberry is one of my favorites and that comes in milk and dark chocolate, right? Yes, it does, yeah. Those are some of my favorites. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I hope you have a great weekend um, and keep enjoying your summer. Thank you.